there's research on um, the broken window syndrome. You know, and basically it says if there's a broken window and nobody fixes it, eventually there's another broken window and no one fixes it and the community begins to psychologically see itself differently. This don't match with that. With all it is, matter of fact. With all it is. Rich people supposed to be looking at this. I'm sorry to say that. This is the hardest work our city will ever do. Rebuild the dilapidated housing, establish a different trajectory for human lives. We don't want a child who was just happened to be born in public housing to have a predestined outcome of failure. You know, cities have been after solving intergenerational poverty for decades, and we failed. When we began Hope SF, it was really framed as a housing development strategy where we were going to be focused on improving the physical conditions of the, of the housing in Alice Griffith. Hunter's View, Sunnydale, and Potrero. You have real factors that, that went into constructing a building in the 50s. You know, you probably will find some lead paint. You may find some asbestos, you know, as the, uh, the, way, the, uh, the way that they contain the, the pipes. You know, that's the way they built in those days. Housing actually is a leverage point for us to do the human transformation work that we have a responsibility to do. YLI's work is really founded on really lifting and elevating young people as leaders in their communities. The adults have a great deal to learn from the young people in terms of how to make communities well and vibrant for everyone. What we're really thinking about is how to cultivate young people's leadership skills and providing different skill opportunities like public speaking, facilitation of meetings, how to work in partnership and community to really drive campaigns um, and make changes in their community. When you come to the streets, you see more majority of the youth, like, you know, young teenagers, teenagers, little kids, big kids, it don't matter, they on the street. So why should we just leave them to the streets when we should have somewhere for them to go? It takes a village to raise a child, so we should all become a village and raise our children. That's my mom's mom. That's who raised me. She explained to me, like, you don't want to follow down those footsteps. If you don't change, like, you're never going to be nothing. You're going to sell drugs, like, your mom and dad and stuff. I didn't feel like that was me. Like, like I don't want to go through that. Like, I've been through that all my life. So why would I want to continue on that, that path? I feel like I'm a part of it. Like, I walk through it, I see it, I'm here, I live in it. I mean, if somebody hungry, like, and I got it, I'm gonna give it. Like, if I give my all to where I live at. I've been here forever, so. The youth should be able to come outside and play and, you know, chalk up the sidewalk. 
we should have activities going on where they don't have to stand out here. That's how when gunshots and all that stuff go on, they hear that when they shouldn't be. Like I just feel like we need like we need to be like more of a family, like more united. They're actually uh, conduits, bringing back information in real time. And so, you know, for that reason, they get to see that they are involved in the planning from the beginning. And so then, then when something comes to fruition, you're going to be excited because you are a part of the whole collective that brought it, brought it to life. They are the indicators of what's to come. You know, if we are not engaging our young people in positive ways, then the future for those young people is very bleak. To support folks and to support young people and community change is about really thinking about um, what your life experience and how that dictates a lot of different paths that you take. No, 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 just start right on there. Be, you know, be creative. You just did. Skeletons, young boy, heart bigger than the elephant. Punch me in, keep that. No, I've been rapping since I was a kid. First time we got a hold of a computer, it had the little recording thing on there. It just said recording voice. So we had a beat playing in the background. We just were making songs like that since we was little. It's the emotion in it, it's the feeling, it's the attitude, everything. It's, it's, it's basically, it's you. It's all off, based off real life situations. This whole world that we in be based over bread. My little cousin teacher told him he gonna end up dead. My little cousin go to Malcolm X school. And his teacher really just be saying he ain't about to do nothing with himself because he got held back and was like, really, you can't tell him he ain't going to be nothing because you don't even know who he be around or you don't even know what can happen in the future. Like, I already know how I was. I'm in the same predicament. I was in the same situation when somebody was telling me what I was and what I wasn't going to be. For me. There's going to be some reverberating effects for the public housing, you know, residents. This is what I'm talking about. We live here, bro. Why is there cameras everywhere? You gotta have a code or a key to get in there. Why we can't just do it like this and just walk into your house? Why you gotta have a code and a key, bro? Not everyone is ready to have others living in the, in the community that are not from traditionally uh, urban community. And that's part of our work. But, um, you know, I do, I do think that they are ready for, for a better, you know, way of living. It was good everybody's still together for me. Everybody, nobody fell off, fall off. Everybody's still family, you know. And the good is even though we do got them buildings, though, everything, it don't change who you really are, you feel me, unless you let it. Everybody's still a community. It's still a community around here, bro. That's the good thing. We're still a community, bro. I grew up in urban city, USA, in the inner city. And uh, I grew up in a community just like this one. And I, I saw a lot of changes, you know. I saw my elementary school have no fences to a four-foot fence to an eight-foot fence. I've seen, um, you know, various uh, programs come and go. And uh, I, I've also, you know, taken advantage of some of them. It gave me the opportunity to tap into other things. When young people start to think outside of themselves, think about the whole, and think about what is the bigger community need. You have to create the infrastructure for that kind of work to, to grow fruit. And you do that neighbor to neighbor. You don't do that from the provider coming in and providing a resource. Uh, and then the person taking the resource and changing their lives. You build capacity within the resident community to be able to support each other.
what each dance is a story. So when we do it as unity, we just, yeah, unity, community, and family, togetherness. That's everything each dance is. To have a program here to represent our culture and just keep it uh, to live on is a great thing to do. Karina first started off here at Dane Stimmon Middle School as a participant at our Beacon program. So now she's a high schooler teaching and mentoring to our young middle school youth. When she was participating as a middle school youth, she was a lot more shy. She would go around and she would speak to those uh, who she was more comfortable with in her crowd. Now she's more comfortable in just letting the world know who she is. It's, it's just astonishing in a sense. She, she's, she's a lovable person. and. And she just creates, she, she makes everyone wants to be around her. I feel like these meetings are important. So I don't like really missing any of them because they could, like a quote that he give us or a warm up question could change my mind on anything. So just missing one prevents like me thinking of something else even better. It's a type of leadership where he steps, like step up, step down. He kind of like laid back a little and see what we are capable of doing and if we need help or something, he steps in and encourages us to take another step forward. Whenever you're ready, Karina, you may begin. We always talk about winning something, right? Like we're we're here, we're 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 going through um, <laughs> this community change process to win something, right? For change, but we don't always remember that the process that we're going through is empowering in and of itself. What's your name? <laughs> I, you know, not to sound too cliche. I mean, they're they're the future. They are the the community of, of tomorrow. You know, they are the ones that's going to take whatever we build and, and uh, build, build on top of that. If I can help make it a better place for them to go and them to hang out and do what they need to do, then that's what I'm for. You gotta really just have somebody leading you in that direction, man. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, man. I'm trying to lead them in that direction. I have family who lives in public housing all around this country. They are the reason I come to work. I don't want people who look like me to not have the same opportunity that, that others have and that I had. Like my sister's little friend actually told me like, oh, I see you as a person I could look up to. I expect there to be uh, you know, a young Isaac uh, growing up here in Alice Griffith. And you know, hopefully that young man or that young woman will, you know, uh, take the torch and carry it forward and this old geezer can come around with a cane and, and just, you know, feel, feel really good about it. It paid off. Well, it's still a work in progress.